In this video, we will set up VPC to VPC peering. This is a continuation of our video on AWS VPCs. Please watch that first if you are new to AWS. I'll provide that link in the description down below. In order to configure VPC peering, we need to put on our networking hat because with VPC peering, you at least need to be familiar with routing and subnet masks. The good thing is that you don't need to be an expert on routing protocols such as OSPF or BGP. If you can set up a simple static route, then you are good to go. VPC peering is also free. There is no cost to creating one or several. So there is no excuse not to practice. Let's get started. started configuring an additional VPC. I say additional because by default, every AWS account will already have a VPC configured. Please watch to the end and then attempt to build your own VPC peering connections. Please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. I will use the default of 10.16, which is not routable over the internet, and give it a name of VPC2. Click Create VPC and let it run through the process. Once the VPC is created, we click on Peering Connections, then Create Peering Connection. A common naming convention is to use the networks that are being connected. For example, we are connecting the 10.16 network to 172.31/16 network. We could call it 10.0 to 172.31. Then select the VPC requester, which in this case is VPC2. To make this a little bit more spectacular, we will choose the VPC in another region. Let's send our traffic from the East Coast to the West Coast without touching the internet. Now you have to know the VPC ID of the VPC you want to peer with. AWS calls it the VPC acceptor. Traffic always stays on the global AWS backbone. In other words, the resources in one VPC do not have to go out to the internet to access the resources in another VPC. Traffic always stays on the global AWS Now let's go to the East Coast VPC and accept the VPC peering requests. This will then transition to provisioning, but quite rapidly it will transition to active. Now we have to add the static routes from east to west. Remember that the West Region VPC is using a 10.0 slash 16 range and our target will be the peering connection. This is where you need to be careful to choose the correct VPC, especially when you have many other VPCs. Sometimes a small mistake like this can mean hours, if not days of troubleshooting and many kick myself moments. And now we have to do exactly the same on the other side. So let's configure the static route from west to east. But remember that the east region VPC is using a 172.31 slash 16 network. And our target will also be the peering connection. So if you recall, when you want to go from east to west, you specify a 10 dot address or 10 dot route to the peering connection. 
from west to east, you specify 172.31 and connecting to the peering connection. That is the two static routes. The next step for testing and proof of concept purposes, let's create an EC2 in the west region and one in the east region. And we have to make sure that we are selecting the correct VPC. West region has two VPCs, so ensure that you pick VPC2. And other than that, we only need to configure our security groups and we will allow ICMP from each of the VPCs network. In this case, we are allowing 172.31 slash 16. In other words, the West region will allow the East region's IP addresses. And in a similar vein, we'll configure the East region. And the same thing, we need to make sure that we are picking the correct VPC. For the East region, there is only one VPC, so we can't mess that up. But now we want to allow ICMP from the West region, which is 10.0 slash 16. And we could always put a little description to make sure that we understand what it's for. I want to emphasize a couple things about the West region. If you notice, the West region EC2 does not have a public IP address. Networking 101 teaches us that private IP addresses are not routable over the internet. So technically, we should not be able to reach the West EC2 from the East because the West only has a private address in the 10 dot range. We can't even SSH into this device because it does not have a routable IP. When we look at the East EC2, this one does have a public IP address as well as a private IP address. So we will connect and SSH into this one. When we run a ping command, we notice and we see that the east can reach the west EC2. How awesome is that? In this AWS document, we could see that there are several PVC configurations that are unsupported, such as overlapping networks and transitive networks. And in a future video, we will discuss these and other PVC options. If you like this video, please subscribe, please give me a thumbs up, and smash that notification bell. I will be posting many more tutorials.